How do we understand the importance of cell size and the surface area to volume ratio in relation to cell structure? We can finally start looking at actual structural components of a cell and we'll start that journey and we have to imagine ourselves zooming into a cell being a part of it and now looking at all of the expansive let's say building and architecture within a cell we'll start our tour of the cell and our tour of cell structure by looking at uh, the nucleus and the ribosomes simultaneously so this flowchart will be entitled nucleus and ribosomes the reason why we're covering both of these at the same time is because they both are independent of the endomembrane system and that endomembrane system is something that we'll talk about in the next couple of videos. This is just something that is a good starting point when we're touring the cell. So we'll first begin our discussion by looking at the nucleus. The nucleus is the brain of the cell. It's the heart of the cell. It's the, where, everything is, where everything goes, where all the information is stored. That's things that we all know based on our prior knowledge. But some basic components that we want to add to that knowledge is the fact that the nucleus is actually one of the most visibly organelles. Visibly, um, organelle. well, it's one of the most visible organelles. Excuse me. It's one of the most visible organelles. There we go. Got it. It's one of the most visible organelles because it has a very uh, emphasized spherical structure. It's also an oval shape. We've all seen it before. If we imagine a cell, what do we usually see? We've all probably seen a cell underneath a microscope. We see a nucleus, and that nucleus is right there. It's pretty easy to see. In addition, the nucleus has one of the most important jobs of life itself. It houses most, and when I say most, I say about 90%, let's say, maybe even more, most of DNA. If you remember, in our discussion of origin of life, the rest of that DNA is either found, let's say, free-floating, actually not free-floating, but the rest of the DNA is actually found probably in the mitochondria. Because remember, the mitochondria used to be its own thing, and that's from our previous lecture. So that's the connection of topics right here. This most, now you understand why it's most, because the rest of it is found where? The mitochondria. So, because the nucleus is a part of our cell structure, it actually has what is known as an envelope, and this is very important. It's called the nuclear envelope, and I'm just going to write envelope here. The envelope is what separates two things. Just like we had a plasma membrane separating the external from the internal environment, now we have an envelope at the nucleus, so we can imagine, let's say, another circle right here that separates, write this down, separates what is known as the nucleoplasm. What does that sound similar to? Cytoplasm, right? Separates nucleoplasm from cytoplasm. Why would you want this? Basically, to sum it all up, the nucleus houses this DNA. This is the gold mine of all cells. Cells need to keep this safe. It makes sense then to have another membrane covering this environment, this nucleoplasm environment, from the cytoplasmic environment, just in case, let's say, a foreign invader comes in. This is an environment that's very, very safe and very, very protected because of this envelope. In addition, this envelope has a double membrane. This double membrane promotes an increased level of, let's say, security, an increased level of structure. It's something you should definitely know. Because of this double membrane uh, enveloped structure, we now have this membrane of the nucleus fusing at intervals, actually. It fuses at intervals. Membrane fuses at certain intervals. I highly suggest looking at a figure, because I, my drawings will not do this justice, but overall, the fusing at intervals creates nuclear pores. And these nuclear pores also promote or allow protein complexes to sort of dock on at these intervals. What's the point of all of this? What's the point of these intervals? This actually is what is going to be the gatekeepers, let's say. This is what allows material, uh, allows materials, uh, allows material, let me rewrite that, allows 
material passage um, to be regulated, very highly regulated. Because once again, what did I tell you? The nucleus is the gold mine. It holds the DNA, the blueprint of the cell. So it makes sense to make sure it's protected and make sure that when you're sending something out or letting something come in, there's these gatekeepers, these pores and protein complexes that tell the nucleus, all right, you know what, I'm going to let this in or I'm not going to let this in. I'm going to let this out or not let this out. In addition, the nucleus also carries uh, the nucleolus. That's another structure within the nucleus. The nucleolus is an area of the nucleus that has RNA and proteins. It's devoted to RNA and proteins. This is, once again, within the nucleus itself, so it's a structure within it. I highly suggest looking at a figure from your textbook for this. There's no membrane for this one, so this one doesn't have a membrane. It's just an area or a region. The most important thing you want to know about the nucleus is that it is the site of ribosome production. Ribosomes are those areas of protein synthesis, if you remember. This is where they're made. They're made in the nucleolus. And then they're shipped out. When they're shipped out, what do you think they have to go through? Nuclear pores, of course. And they have to go through these nuclear pores because this, this is what allows material to be regulated, the passage of materials. Now we can finish up our discussion on the nucleus and ribosomes by finishing and talking about the ribosomes. So we've made ribosomes in the nucleus. Let's talk about what they do in a little bit more detail. So once we've made ribosomes, we now can talk about ribosomes right over here. Ribosomes are not membrane bound. Not membrane bound. What does that mean? That means that they actually are not considered organelles not organelles. Technically speaking, they are not cell organelles because they're not membrane bound. Organelles are things that are separate from their environment. Unless they're membrane bound, they're not organelles. Remember the prokaryotes and we talked about how they do have ribosomes? This makes sense now because we said prokaryotes have no membrane bound organelles. And you might have been thinking, oh, but they have ribosomes. Isn't that an organelle? It's not because the ribosome itself is not membrane bound. In addition, just like I stated earlier, these ribosomes leave the nucleus via the nuclear pore. So it's worth writing, leaves nucleus via these nuclear pores. So we'll write that down, via nuclear pores. That's its mode of exit. And also, things will enter through those nuclear pores if necessary. Um, ribosomes also are a very important site of cytoplasmic and I mentioned this very briefly, protein synthesis. This is where we make proteins. Why are proteins made? Proteins are made because proteins do a variety of functions that promote cell life, that help the cell to live. And the last thing we'll talk about um, for this flowchart is that there are two types of ribosomes. And these two types are dependent on their status. Their status, their status can be either free or not free. The free ribosomes, these are known as unbound ribosomes. Makes sense, right? Whereas the not free ribosomes, a better way to talk about them is that these are called bound ribosomes. But if they're bound, they have to be bound to something, right? Of course, they're not membrane bound, but they are actually bound to a separate structure known as the endoplasmic reticulum. This is a different and totally independent cell organelle that we'll talk about when we get into our endomembrane system. From this point forward, the endoplasmic reticulum will just be labeled ER for short. So overall, now we understand what the nucleus and ribosome are. The nucleus is the house, is the brain of the cell. It's where everything, the most important information, this DNA, is housed. But how is it housed? It's housed within this nucleolus um, enveloped region. That region is enveloped because it provides a certain level of protection and provides a certain level of, let's say, regulation. And this is important because we want to make sure that the nucleus is protected from outside invaders that might be in the cytoplasmic region. So that nucleoplasm is separate from the cytoplasm. And we talked about ribosomes. Ribosomes are made where? In the nucleolus. The nucleolus produces ribosomes, takes them, and re removes them or lets them leave the nucleolus region via those nuclear pores. This is where protein synthesis happens, and there are two types listed right over here. And now we can finally start talking about our endomembrane system in the next series 
of cell structure videos.